Sandra asked me a question, but we hadn't been paying attention. Pretty shook her head. I'm sorry? What? Uh, I zoned out. Do you want to go to Turbo's for a slice? Their picture was empty, and Turbo was fantastic drinking and drunk. Is the Pope naked in the woods? <laughs> Darren raised an eyebrow, but Sandra laughed. Green Company donned their coats again and made their way through the bar. Ree licked her lips in anticipation of the pizza. Why didn't I think of this earlier? The trio walked up the stairs to where the bar emptied out into an alley that was as likely to hold uh, host a game of hacky sack as a homeless guy tell selling tube socks. As she reached for the door, Ree heard a shout, Go up, fracking piece of gossip! If Ree hadn't placed the voice by itself, which she did, the dense geek speak cursing and the fact that there were more strange noises coming from an alleyway were enough to assure her that she was hearing the frantic customer from this afternoon. Reed ducked around the corner and saw the man from earlier in the alley holding a prop lightsaber and looking even worse from the wear. That were possible. And then things got really weird. Facing him was a 12 foot tall gray green skinned beast with a bulbous nose and eyes so beady they probably deserved their own craft fair. <laughs> It was, for all we could tell, some kind of troll. Except for the fact that trolls didn't exist and sure as hell didn't belong in the university district on a Thursday night when all she wanted to do was find some place to drink in peace without running into one of her exes or any of the crazy customers from her job. Break. Now, archaic English. A thing that cannot be bought by Juan Rianan Ana Maria Reyes. Darren and Sandra both screamed when they saw the thing. The strange customer stepped forward, raising his lightsaber, which made the whirring hum of a high-end prop. Except the glow was too good, too bright, for any of the sabers Ree had ever seen. Ree kept a pretty close eye on the designs of the web to see if anything was cooler for practical use than her Force FX, but she hadn't found anything yet. And the plastic or glass or whatever it was on this one was way too thin to be practical. She couldn't even see it through the glow. And then the guy twitched forward with a quick tendo slice and cut off the troll's hand. What the F? <laughs> the troll's bellow echoed through the alley, shaking dirt from the walls. The other side of the alley was a dead end into a building, so it wasn't like she could escape, except back into the bar. Sandra and Darren screamed from behind her, then reheard the door slam shut. Well... The troll took a lumbering step towards Reed, and she found her mind split in two. One part of her was so scared that she wanted to dig through, her con through concrete to get away. But another part of her was strangely unimpressed, instead buzzing with excitement, saying, the troll from that movie was better looking than this thing. The logical part of her brain said to the suddenly fearless part, but self, that thing was on TV, and this one wants to tear your liver out through your nose. Run! <laughs> Before she could decide, the troll brought down its other massive hand toward her head. Without thinking, Reed dove into a shoulder roll to her right of the beast's blow. She composed a letter in her mind as she rolled. Dear Dad, thank you for enrolling me in Taekwondo when I was five and not letting me quit until I had my black belt. Love, your doting daughter. P.S. Trolls are real. I know, right? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Re rolled up to her feet, wondering how in the wild, wild west she was going to joint lock or jump kick yeah. a 12 foot tall monster. Then the increasingly <laughs> sane seeming customer jumped forward and slashed again, his lightsaber cutting the troll's legs off at the knees. The beast howled in pain as it collapsed to the ground. Re scrambled black and jumped clear as it collapsed to the ground. Re scrambled black, uh, which crashed to the ground at her feet. Over the troll's body, she saw a man standing in a perfect force unleashed stance. <laughs> He watched the troll, standing ready. After a moment, he relaxed and touched a button on the lightsaber. The too realistic blade blinked out in a moment with the requisite sound. Deactivated, it looked like an expensive prop hill. Are you all right? He asked. The hell? She answered, pointing at the main troll. It rolled over once, flailing for the man. Ah! She thought, and shuffled away another couple of steps. The bearded man jumped out of the beast's reach, unfazed. Are you hurt? He asked. Reed dusted off the street off of her legs. A few scrapes, nothing bad. No, but confused as hell would apply? Understandable. You, you'll want to step back a bit more. Why? She asked. A second later, the dying troll popped like a burst balloon and gushed into a puddle of viscous gray-green goop. Reed hopped back, but the wave of goop caught up to her, lapping over the sides of her boots. She cursed absently, walking over to the man. So who are you? Call me Eastwood, the man said. 
Re put her hands on her hips, thoroughly passed unamused and approaching Hulk smash. <laughs> First name Clint, she asked, one eyebrow raised. It's a nickname. Taking another step towards Eastwood, Re said, I'd like to return to my earlier question. The hell? <laughs> yeah. Eastwood gestured with his head to an open manhole in the street. He was a troll. Came out of the sewer. We gave him a skeptical look. There was no way something that big could fit through a manhole. Not to mention that she still hadn't good and gotten a good explanation on the whole trolls exist fact. Eastwood nodded. You have questions, and, and I can provide answers. The fact I've saved your life means you owe me the chance to explain. Something I intend on doing. He took another look around the alley. Looks clear. Come with me now before the doubt settles in. He pronounced doubt with a capital letter, much in the same way that her dad could say, Triana Ana Maria Rez, come here now, when she was in trouble. Which happened a lot uh, between her childhood science experiments, Nerf war escalation, and the avant-garde haircuts she gave their golden retriever, Lucy. <laughs> she said, my friends are back there, so I'm not leaving. You can explain right here, or I can call the cops. Eastwood her own. In less than five minutes, they won't remember this at all. That's what the doubt does. But it won't affect you. I can explain why I came into your store and why the troll was here, but we need to get out of this alley before something worse arrives. He looked over his shoulder again, scanning the street. Resnorted. Are you some kind of ghetto Kenobi? Come here to teach me the ways of the Force so I can become a Jedi like my father? Eastwood flashed her a surprised look, then shook it off and pulled the lightsaber prop from his coat. It's what I had on hand. Either you're drunk or I am. Wait here. <laughs> she said, not waiting for him to respond. But only one of us just came out of a bar, Re, she told herself. Ah! Re turned and opened the door again. Sandra and Darren weren't in the stairwell, so she walked down the stairs to see them looking around the entranceway of the bar. Sandra looked up and said, Oh, thought you were still in the bathroom. Ready for pizza? Not to sound like a broken record, but the hell? 